In this video, I am going to discuss about economic systems. Economic systems refer to the structures and processes by which a society produces, distributes and consumes goods and services. The study of economic system is concerned with understanding how different systems allocate resources and distribute income and how they influence economic growth, efficiency and equality. There are three types of economic systems. Market economy, this is also known as free market. Then command economy, this is also known as planned economy. Then mixed economy. Let's talk about the market economy first. This is also known as free market and also known as capitalism. This is an economic system where the prices of goods and services are determined by supply and demand and individuals and businesses have the freedom to produce, buy and sell goods and services as they see fit. The main characteristic of a market economy is that government is not intervening to determine the prices. Prices are determined by the supply and demand of the goods and services. Perfect competition will exist in this economic structure. Governments should ensure the competition policy is established in order to attain perfect competition. This means government should restrict monopoly, oligopoly and collusion. These are against the perfect competition. We discussed these topics in an early video. The government's role is limited to protecting property rights and enforcing contracts. Now let's talk about the second type of economic structure, command economy. This is also known as planned economy as well as socialism. This is an economic system where the government controls the production and distribution of goods and services. So this is the opposite to free market. Now the government is intervening in an economy and deciding the prices of goods and services. The prices of goods and services are determined by the government and the allocation of resources is based on a central plan. The goal of command market is to achieve greater equality in the distribution of wealth and income. Now let's talk about the third type of economic structure, mixed economy. This is an economic system that combines elements of both the free market and command market. In this system, there is some degree of government intervention in the economy, but the market still plays a significant role in the allocation of resources. This system aims to balance the efficiency and innovation of the market with the social equality and stability of government intervention. Most of the countries in the world follow a mixed market economy or close to this structure. Basically, the mixed economy is the combination of free market and the command market. Now let's talk about the merit and demerit goods. Merit goods. These are goods and services that are considered to be socially desirable or these have positive externalities. We talked about this in a previous video and that the government may choose to subsidize or provide for free in order to promote the welfare of society. For example, education, healthcare and public transportation. All these have positive externalities to the society. So the government will encourage these types of goods and services. Demerit goods. Demerit goods are goods and services that are considered to have negative social consequences also known as negative externalities and that the government may choose to tax or regulate in order to reduce their consumption. For example, tobacco, alcohol and gambling. Now let's talk about the public goods. Public goods are goods and services that are non-excludable and non-rival in consumption. This means that once the public good is produced, it is difficult or impossible to exclude someone from using it. And this means that once the public good is produced, it is difficult or impossible to exclude someone from using it. And one person's consumption of the good does not reduce the amount available for others to consume. For example, national defense, police and fire protection, public parks and street lighting. This means everyone can get to consume these goods and services.
and there will be no rivalry in consumption because everyone gets to consume me. The consumption of one person does not affect the consumption of the other person. Now let's talk about the advantages of public goods, non-exclusion. Public goods are available to everyone regardless of their ability to pay. This means that everyone can benefit from them regardless of their income or wealth. Non-rivalry. The consumption of a public good by one person does not reduce the amount available for others to consume. This means that the benefit of public goods can be shared by everyone. Economies of scale. Public goods often have significant economies of scale, which means that the cost of producing them decreases as the quantity produced increases. Positive externalities. Public goods can create positive externalities, which are benefit that accrue to individuals who are not directly consuming the good. For example, public parks can increase property values and improve the quality of life in a community. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of public goods. Free rider problem. The non-exclusivity of public goods can lead to the free rider problem in which individuals have an incentive to not to pay for the good since they can still consume it even if they do not contribute. For example, national defense or street lighting. Everyone can use it without having to pay for it. Funding. The production and maintenance of public goods require significant resources and funding for these goods must come from taxes or other forms of compulsory contributions. Inefficient allocation. The government is not always able to allocate resources efficiently and the provision of public goods can lead to waste and inefficiency. Limited choice. Because public goods are provided by the government, individuals may not have a choice in the types of goods and services that are provided and may not be able to consume the goods and services that they prefer. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.